Good afternoon, everyone. Thankful for another Lord's Day and another evening that we get together. A snowy evening. <laughs> I uh, have a rule that I set in order shortly after Eugene was born. He was born um, April 29th, 1980 at the submarine base in Groton, Connecticut. And we'd have his birthday parties outside sometimes. And I was thinking, I said, now, if we could have Gene's birthday party outside, then winter's gone. But if we can't have his birthday party outside, thank you, Philip, outside, then <laughs> like the groundhog, we have a couple more weeks where we need to uh, be ready for the snow. But um, I heard that the weather's supposed to improve quite a bit. So, and, and, and even with the snow, we're still fine. God has been good to us, and he blesses us. I mentioned to you last time I spoke to you, and I gave it kind of a strange name because I wanted it to be an attention getter because of a reality that I saw in God's word that was a little bit surprising to me. On one hand, it was a little surprising, and, and, and in another sense, it was not surprising. And the sermon is titled tonight, Blockers and Stoppers. Now, you would think to yourself, first off, that those of us who know the Lord would not be impede any progress towards um, helping people because we know that the Lord helped people. That's what he was about, and that's what he is about. In fact, in Brad's prayer tonight, Brad talked about the fact that he cares about us the way that he does. And because he cares about us the way that he does, you and I should be facilitators instead of blockers and stoppers. We should facilitate a, a person um, hearing God's word and embracing God's word. We should facilitate it knowing that in doing so, we could possibly lead someone to Christ. After all, someone led us to Christ um, at one time. And we thank God for that. But it's kind of, it was kind of peculiar, and you're familiar with, none of the scriptures that I'm going to read tonight are scriptures that you're not familiar with. In fact, you're very familiar with them. But um, it's kind of um, strange, it's kind of strange when you find I'll get this settled here if I'm, yeah, I hear it, so I know that it's, whenever I ju ju um, put this thing on, I always look at Mary Ann so that I can see, <laughs> what is Mary Ann's experience? <laughs> okay, um, you would think that those, again, those who have received the, um, the wonderful grace that we have in Christ Jesus, um, the blessing, who understand the love that, that we've been given, that we would do anything that we can to facilitate it. But there's something so broken in us until even though you think that way and it's, it's logical, sometimes that's not the fact. Sometimes we, will, we can become the biggest um, obstacle, which makes us a stopper or makes us a blocker. Let me give you one just to kind of get the road ready for where I want to go. And, this, and tonight's going to be the beginning of a number of lessons I want to give with this particular theme because it's important that you and I not be blockers and stoppers. Now, a man of God during a time period when God spoke to the fathers and so forth and spoke to his prophets, this particular prophet that you and I know so well, it is, to me, the last chapter of his book is the most disturbing one to me. Not the tailor-made fish that God made for him to get him to go where he was supposed to, to go, and not even the very fact 
that he knew that the storm that the people were experiencing on that ship that he was on, and you know I'm talking about Jonah, was because of him. And how in the world do you think that you can head in the opposite direction and get away from God? How can you know God and think that you can defy him and, and, and just be in total opposition to what the, the message that he's given you to give to the people? Well, we know the story in the story of Jonah that um, Jonah didn't want the Ninevites to repent. Jonah wanted them to be executed is what he really wanted. He, want, he, had, he wanted no good for them. So instead of Jonah being a facilitator of the good things that God has for the Ninevites, Jonah became a blocker. Now, he wasn't a stopper because God wouldn't let him stop it. But he became a blocker. But he also found out that his blocking didn't do him any good. The thing that's the most amazing to me, and I'm not, and, and again, I just, I only mentioned him to just kind of lay down the path so that you can see where we're going. I want to encourage you, first off, to read the whole book, but if you're busy, at least read the last chapter. Because the last chapter, the very fact that that man could sit on the others after the Ninevites repent. And that's what we want. We want to facilitate repentance because we want people to be saved. Just like in your prayer again. God cares about us. Because of his care and his mercy, you and I are saved. That's the only reason why you and I are saved. And so you would think that those of us who are his would not want to do anything to prevent other people from being saved. Plus, if we look at it for what it really is, when we're stoppers and blockers, who have we aligned ourselves with? Think about that. That's really something to think about. We've aligned ourselves with our adversary, the one who is a thief. Now he came to steal, kill, and to destroy, to rob. And so when we become stoppers and blockers, we're aligning ourselves because we want to stop something good that God has for, for people or we want to block it. And God's final word to Jonah, and I always pray that he got it and the Bible just doesn't record it for, uh, for you and I because I'm, I know that there's more. God has given us exactly what we need in his word. But it's sad that it ends with God saying to Jonah, Shall I not have mercy on a bunch of people who don't know their right hand from their left hand and save much cattle? Do you know that that included Jonah? And I don't think that he ever really realized, well, at least what we see in the scriptures, he did not realize that. So we need to make sure that w what we do is we facilitate so that people can hear and so that people can see um, so I invite you to turn in your Bibles with me, if you would, to the first chapter of, um, I'm sorry, chapter 4 of the book of Luke. Chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4, I'm going to start reading at verse 15. And this is concerning our Lord. And he taught in their synagogues. Being, uh, being glorified by all. So he, came, so he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. Now what he's going to read here is very, very important. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Number one, the Lord is interested in those who are poor. And in our world, um, we don't always have the compassion on poor that we should have, but 
this reading, as we're going to see, Jesus is letting them know that what I'm reading to you right now is also being fulfilled. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Why would we want to stop or block that? To proclaim liberty <clears throat> to the captive and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. They were not happy about that. They were not happy at all. In fact, um, they went to, um, to take Jesus and throw him over the side of a cliff. But we see here clearly that he was interested in the poor. He was interested in, in, in um, healing those with broken hearts to proclaim um, liberty, freedom for those who were captives. Think about what that means. They were captives to who? Captives to, to our enemy. Freedom that we, that, that we have that's being proclaimed to them. To set at liberty those who were oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable day of the Lord. Do you know that even when John the Baptist, when things became difficult for John at a particular moment and he was concerned, because remember when he saw Jesus, he says concerning Jesus to his disciples, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He knew. But now he's getting ready to be beheaded because he was also faithful enough to stand up and tell Herod what he didn't want to hear, and that's the fact that he had a woman that was not his to have, his brother's wife. And then he sends his disciples to Jesus. And remember what Jesus' words was, Tell John that the blind see. In other words, all of these good things, things that you've been waiting for, that I am he because of those things. So therefore, those are the things that you and I don't want to stop and block. I'm going to get to the stopping, stopping and blocking in a minute. But I want to, again, just put in front of us, we know that a, we know number one, that even a, um, prophet of the Lord can get to a point where he can stop or block if, 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 um, at, if he has some type of um, motivation, as with Jonah, who, had, who was motivated against the Ninevites. But we, but we see what the Lord came to free us, to show us love, to show us compassion, and to show us mercy. Turn in your Bible to the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter. And after we look at these two scriptures, then we will take a look at the blocking and stopping that I was uh, referring to. Uh, Matthew, the 11th chapter. And I am going to start reading at the end of the chapter, which we have a beautiful song concerning. Come unto me, starting in verse 28. The Bible says, this is, this is what the Lord has to say, consistent with what he just got through saying in the um, synagogue. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Why would anyone want to stop or block that? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Why? For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. We should be about facilitating people understanding that, especially in the burdensome world that you and I live in now, and with all the things that are going on around us and the difficulties that, that men and women have to deal with on a daily basis and the stresses of this life. With all the trials and so forth, 
Jesus is saying, come to me. Because what I have to, to give you is a burden that's light and easy. And you'll find rest when you won't find rest in this world. So when we consider the nature of our Lord, then what we need to do is think about the fact that those who are God's people can interfere with the very thing that the Lord came to bring to mankind. And we can do it without even thinking about it. Um, and we can do it in, in, in ways to where the very blessing that God calls to wants to give to people can be taken away. Now, I'm not going to have time to read all the scriptures that I'd like, but like I told you, tonight is going to be an introduction um, for a little journey that I want to take through um, several sections of scriptures. But when we consider um, the very fact that uh, people can block and stop um, we're not just talking about um, God's people, but people in general. Uh, people around us can uh, prevent, um, help prevent the blessing uh, that the Lord has uh, for people. Um, religious leaders can do it. And even people in your community um, can, can do that. So what I want you to do is, if you would, turn with me in your Bible to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. And we're going to listen to something that you would think would not come from people of God. Now, we know in the scripture that many that there's been times where the disciples have gone to Jesus and they asked Jesus, why do you speak in parables? And he told them why. He said, well, you know, it's been given to you to know, but others through parables. So if it's given to you to know and it's freely given to you then what should you and I do with that that we know and if the Lord cares if he came to um, to take care of those who are oppressed if he came to lose the burdens that people have if he's telling people align yourself with me be yoked to me because my yoke is easy and my burden is light and he's given you and I his word, then it would seem like we would do what we need to do to make sure that people get it. In Luke chapter 9, I'm going to start reading at verse, let me see, about 50, 51. Now it came to pass when the time had come for him to be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And as they went, they entered into the village of the Samaritans to prepare for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set for the journey for Jerusalem to Jerusalem and when his disciples James and John saw this they said Lord do you want us to command fire to come down and uh, from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did oh, what a thing to say do you want us to command fire to come down, to consume them? Now, because of how our Lord is, they're still learning. But this is the nature sometimes of how human beings can be. This wasn't blocking. This was stopping because they were, they, um, they were not ready to hear. So the, the disciples' solution was, well, let's take them out. Now, what kind of solution is that? That's not the solution that you would think that would come from those who are the Lord's people. But it's recorded here for us. 
because it gives us a little bit of insight into how human beings can be. Uh, some of the things that we're capable of doing. Call fire down from heaven. And do you know what they were referring to when they were talking about Elijah? That fire wasn't for people who were um, um, like these who just didn't know. Those, that fire was for the prophets of Baal. Um, Jezebel and her prophets. And that's a, a challenge that had taken place on Mount Carmel. And, um, but even to think to themselves, shall we call fire down? The Lord would never say anything like that. So we need to, we need to think as his people. Uh, we're going to be facilitators of his blessings. And when we look at people, we're going to look and see ourselves. And we see the very fact that just like they need help, we need help as well. And when we think like that, it makes it a little bit easier for you and I to care and understand when uh, people um, do things that may not be in line with what you and I, how you and I might think. I want to give you, I, I wanted to read it. I'm not going to read it tonight. I just want to talk about it a little bit. But the next person is a man who calls himself Legion. Jesus went to the Isle of the Gadarenes, and he finds a man there who is demon-possessed, totally out of his mind. And I think about this man. I've thought about him a lot. And I've sat down and I've read and studied some of the things that he was doing and asked myself a series of questions. One of the things that he was doing was he was cutting himself. And I asked the question, was he cutting himself because he didn't like the condition that he was in? What was the people's response to dealing with this particular person? The people were blockers and stoppers. You know what their solution was? He ran around the, the, the catacombs, the graves, and it was naked. Their solution was to chain him up. Would that be the type of solution that the Lord would have for him? We know that it wasn't because when the Lord saw him, the Lord talked to him. And then the Lord freed him. But to make a long story very short, when he was freed, he wanted to go and be with Jesus. Do you know why? You ever ask yourself why? Did anyone else care about him? It didn't seem like it. It seemed like um, no one cared. And Jesus tells him no. And Jesus tells him to go home and tell his family. And the first time I, that really hit me, I started thinking. I said, okay. So we have a man here who's running around cutting himself and howling in chains and breaking the chains because of his condition and the people's solution is to, um, to just go ahead and chain him. And he, he's an outcast. We're not going to do anything for him. And when Jesus frees him and he talks, he, he talks to Jesus and Jesus calls the demons that are in him to go into the swine. And the swine went over the cliff into the sea and were choked. In fact, if you want some information, see Brad, and he will tell you what they had for dinner that day. Brad and I talked about this years ago. But um, the people, they were upset that their pigs had gone over the side of the cliff, that their pigs were gone. No care at all for this man. 
So I picture in my mind, I'm a visual person, that all of a sudden here he comes. Jesus tells him to go home. So you know then that before, before this had happened to him, he had a home. Maybe a wife. And can you imagine what must have been going, and maybe he had children. Can you imagine what must have gone through their mind if they could look out the window and see the husband or father walking up towards the house, clothed and in his right mind? Can you imagine how, how that must have felt to them? You see, Jesus healed and Jesus worked with people and he's given you and I the same ministry to be a blessing to other people. For you and I not to be stoppers and blockers. Just like the um, Jonah was a stopper or a blocker anyway. Jonah was a blocker and, I'm not, and we know the, the um, disciples early as they wanted fire to come down and consume the people who were not readily accepted um, to accept Jesus right at that particular time. And now we have a situation where we have people on an island, Isle of the Gadarenes, where they, um, their solution was to chain a man. No, not a lot of concern about doing anything to help, th help that man. Now, I'm going to throw this out there to you. Do we do anything like that today? We do. And um, sometimes our solution is to just to put a person in jail and not provide very much to try to help that person make a change in their lives. That's inconsistent, though, with our Lord. Our Lord would do what needed to be done to try to help. And I'm not saying, it, this is not about prison tonight. This is about being uh, not being stoppers and blockers. This is about you and I being fil facilitators to try to help because our Lord came to help. He came to free and he came to deliver people. And that's what you and I are called to do. In Mark chapter 10, verses 13 through 16, people were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took a child, and he, uh, and he took the children in his arms, placed his hand on them, and blessed them. That's 13 through 16, Mark chapter 10. Jesus told his disciples, do not be blockers. Do not stop the little children from coming unto me. Now, I ask myself, why would they... Um, want to stop well there's some real reasons you know that you and I can think of why um, they, they might want to do that but one of the things that we see is that Jesus did not want them to be stopped because Jesus wants you and I to be facilitators and not stoppers and blockers um, it was natural that parents should want to bring their children you know to, um, to Jesus for, for a blessing um, so they might tell their little, their little children um, to go to Jesus so he could um, put his hand on you, so he can pronounce a blessing over you, so that he could 
pray for you. But some people think, well, children get in the way. And disciples might have been thinking about things like that. Children get in the way. Children should be seen and not heard. We've heard that many times. But our Lord had time for the little children, and he tells them, do not prevent them from coming unto me. Do not block them. Do not stop them. Facilitate their coming to me. In Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through, tw um, through 28, we have the treatment of the, of the uh, Canaanite woman. Um, in fact, let's read it first, and then I'll talk to you about it. Turn to Matthew chapter 15. We'll read it together. And we're all familiar with the story. And I'm going to start reading at verse 21. Matthew 15, starting at verse 21. And Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of, of Canaan came from the region, and she cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by demons. She's uh, severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. Now, I want to stop for a second. If he answered her not a word, um, would you say that that's ignoring her? Yes. And um, how do you feel about being ignored? How does it make you feel if someone ignores you? Doesn't make me feel good, that's for sure. But she's ignored, or at least it, it seemed so um, at, at, this, at this point. But he answered her not a word, verse 23. And his disciples came and urged him. Oh, so what's going on with the disciples now? The disciples are becoming stoppers here again. Send her away for her, uh, her crying out after us. In other words, we're tired of this woman. Send her away. But he said, um, but he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. Um, what just happened? Well, he ignores her at first. The disciples come as stoppers and blockers, send her away. She's making too much noise. We don't want to hear her. She's in the way. Um, the Lord is busy. The Lord is tired. The Lord is getting some rest. Um, he doesn't have time for this. But now Jesus talks to her. And he tells her, I was sent to the, to the um, um, children of Israel. There's a, a point, a big point that we can make here um, for people who are in need. And I'm going to say it like this. If you're really, really, really in need and you're trying to get to the Lord and you run into some blockers and stoppers, you have to get by them and appeal to the Lord as this woman does. She's not letting the fact that the disciples just got through saying what they had to say to the Lord. She's not letting that stop her from approaching the Lord to take care of her need because she loved her daughter and her daughter had a need and she knew that the Lord was able to meet that need. So she was not going to let the stoppers and blockers stop her or block her from getting what she needed for her child. Now I'm gonna tell you, I learned years ago not to let blockers and stoppers stop me from following the Lord. Because, I'm going to give you an example. Think about the leper. And we'll go, we'll go back and we'll finish reading this. But just think about the leper. A leper, a person with leprosy, a disease that cannot be healed. 
And a leper was supposed to say, unclean, unclean. <coughs> a leper wasn't even supposed to be out in the population. But do I read in my Bible that lepers came to Jesus? You ever think about that? <laughs> they came anyway. They were not going to let the blockers and stoppers stop them. Think about it like this. I'm going to take my leprous self right up there to him because he is probably the only one that could save me and nobody else is doing anything for me. So I am going to take my leprous self up there and I'm going to ask him for some healing. Now that's good. That's a good way to think. I'm not going to allow those who are blockers and stoppers to stop me from possibly being cured of this leprosy. And we know that that was the case with the woman who had the issue of blood, right? With an issue of blood, she's not supposed to be out in the population either. You couldn't even sit on a, a piece of a item that she sat on, according to the Levitical law. She was supposed to be somewhere away from people because of her blood disorder. And she spent all the money that she had trying to get it resolved. And it wasn't resolved. So, I'm, so she's thinking, I'm going to get in the middle of this crowd with all of these people, even though I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm going to do everything I can to get as close to Jesus as I can, and I'm going to touch the hem of his garment so that I can be healed, because nothing else has healed me. I like the fact that she was that type of person. And you and I know what happened. Jesus healed her. And do you know that when, the, when he says, who touched me? And the disciples said, what? Everybody's touching you. This message is there for you and I. And it's not about the crowd of people being around. It's about him knowing her individual need and doing what he does to try to help this woman who was poor and desperate. Because that's how our Lord is. Because he cares for us. And that's how he expects you and I to be. Not stoppers and blockers. Let's continue to read about this woman who had a need for her daughter. Verse 25 again. Um, I'm, in, I'm, I'm still in Matthew 15, starting in verse 25. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. I love this. I, when I think about this, I picture. I don't know if you've had to do that. I have. I've had to do that. I, I've been on my face many times asking the Lord, help me. I need your help. Lord, help me. Verse 26. But he answered and says, it is not good for to, um, to take the children's bread and to throw it to the, um, to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. The disciples who knew the Lord's will, what did they say? And you and I are the disciples. She's making too much noise. She's yelling. Get her out of here. Send her away. Is that how God's people ought to be? The answer is no. We know, we know the answer to that. Is that how the Lord was? The Lord seemed to be really, really impressed with the faith that she has and her persistence to get what she needed. Oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you 
as you desire. Her daughter's healed. Now I know whether you want to say it or not, every last one of us in here has somebody that we care about, that we really want the Lord to do what only he can do in their life to bring them around. I do. I have more than one. I have a lot of people that I feel like that about. And sometimes when I pray to God, I say to the Lord, please give them the blessing that they need the most, that only you can provide. I might try my best to do as much facilitation as I can in their life to help them, but I know what he can do. And you and I need to facilitate those kind of things happening in the lives of people if we care about them. The clock always beats me up. I have more that I want to uh, talk to you about, but as I told you, I will preach this a few more times because there are a few more things that I really want us to look at because I find that it is very, very easy to be a, a stopper and a blocker. We do it for a number of reasons. Sometimes it's simply that we don't see the value in a person. We don't see the value sometimes in children, especially in the world that you and I live in. We don't see the value in children so much until we kill them even, even before they're born. And that really bothers me. And I suspect that it bothers you as well. When we fail to realize how much God cares for us, or we don't realize what Jesus said when he began his ministry and he said, I have come to heal. I've come to free. I've come to bind up those with broken hearts. I've come to set at liberty those who are, who, who are captives. And as you and, and you and I are as his disciples need to facilitate the very same thing in the lives of human beings and not be stoppers and not be blockers. I find several cases that are a little bit disturbing to me concerning the, the disciples. But you know what? One of the wonderful things that, that I really, really like the same disciples who wanted to call fire down got it a little bit later. And Jesus was patient with them. Jonah, I don't know. I hope that he got it. Don't know. Because the Bible leaves Jonah not realizing about the gourd that came up and not even realizing the blessing associated with the worm that ate the gourd and caused the sun to be back on Jonah. Jonah got himself a booth on the other side of the river because he wanted the other shoe to drop. I don't like him. I hate him. And I'm going to sit here for a while because I know that after a while they're going to do something and the Lord's going to destroy him. Think about that. Did Jonah do something? Yeah, he did. And it's a good thing the Lord didn't destroy him. And on that note, I leave this sermon with you. And I pray that, you, that it blesses you and just cause you to think. Those who you would think who were given understanding of God's word. And Jesus said, others have to hear it by parables. But it was given to you. Even in Matthew 16, when Jesus says, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they began to go through a whole bunch of um, Jeremiah, some say Elijah, or some of the other prophets. But who do you say that I am? Peter says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus says, blessed art thou, Simon by Jonah, for faith, I mean for flesh, and blood has not revealed it to you. In other words, this was given to you by God. And if it was given to you by God, 
then don't be a blocker and don't be a stopper. If you're here tonight and need a prayer for anything at all, our Lord cares about us, always cares for us. And he tells us many times the reason why we don't receive is because we don't ask. I ask him for everything now. I am greedy when it comes to prayers. Everything that I do in my life, I, ha I, I have finally gotten to a point where I learn I ask him for everything. I do. I'm, I'm not going to uh, sit here and tell you that I don't. And I don't ask him just for a little bit anymore. But I ask him according to, to um, Proverbs chapter 30, to give me enough so I, I don't have to go out and do the wrong thing. It's what was said by the wise man in Proverbs 30. And don't give me too much so that I can have a big, giant, fat head and think to myself that I got it myself. I want to know that it came from you and that I have what I need because you are my God. So if you're in need of prayers for anything at all or you want to become a child of God, whatever your need is, won't you make it known while we together stand and sing? <laughs>